Well, between the supply chain issues and inflation, families are paying a lot this year for everyday items. And one question on your midterm ballot asks if you would want to cut income taxes to save money. Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez tonight's going 360, taking an in-depth look at Proposition 121 and why some say the tax break doesn't help middle or lower income Coloradans enough. There is a saying in this world, nothing is certain except for two things, death and taxes, coined by Benjamin Franklin, but still true today. For decades, Colorado's income tax depended on how much you earn, until 1987 when it became a flat 5% tax for everyone. That dropped to 4.75% in 1999, then 4.63% in 2000, and these days it's at 4.55%. Proposition 121 asks voters if they want to lower the state income tax to 4.4%. It would apply to both individuals and corporations. In this Denver 7 election 360, you'll hear from supporters of the tax cut who say this is about saving people money, opponents who say this will affect a lot of state programs, and a tax expert about where Colorado currently stands. Between inflation and the supply chain, costs are going up so much, like groceries, gas, everything else is costing people a lot of money. But while families struggle, Michael Fields from Advanced Colorado Action says the state is doing fine. The state has more money than ever. Uh, we're at a $38 billion state budget. We have enough to take care of government. What we need to do is put more money back into the pockets of people. It's true that the state's budget is bigger than ever. A strong economy, robust tax revenue, and a massive influx of federal funding has resulted in a $36.4 billion budget this year. With that, state lawmakers increased school spending, put money in the rainy day fund, and allocated more for construction and air quality projects, among other priorities. The ballot measure means the state would collect $412.6 million less next year alone, a 2.4% drop in the general fund revenue. Most people would see about 63 bucks in savings per year. Still, for families just trying to pay for the everyday, $60 is a lot, you know, when groceries are up, when inflation is 8.2%. And Field says this could make Colorado more attractive for businesses, which would, in turn, bring in more tax revenue. Revenue. We can afford it and it helps our state be more competitive. Colorado has one of the lowest income taxes in the country. Scott Wasserman from the Bell Policy Center points out voters just decided to cut taxes two years ago. Whenever that happens, some people save more. People who are very wealthy stand to gain thousands of dollars from this income tax cut, whereas uh, the average Coloradan will get maybe $65. People earning $1 million or more make up less than 1% of taxpayers in the state, but they would see nearly half of the total savings from this ballot measure. We're asking Colorado voters to just really stop and ask themselves, do you stand to lose more than you would gain. Wasserman says the state might have more cash than ever now, but those federal dollars aren't going to keep flowing forever. And even though the economy is doing well, there's no guarantee for the future. We may find ourselves perhaps in a recession in one or two years. They have to ask themselves, what am I going to lose in roads? What am I going to lose in schools? What am I going to lose in mental health? Or some could choose to raise fees or sales taxes to try to make up the difference, which disproportionately impacts lower income families. So he wants people to vote no. To put Colorado's tax code into context, Colorado has one of the simplest income tax rates in the whole country. The state also ranks 19th in the nation for the lowest tax burden. MSU professor Robert Persichini says lowering the income tax would mean fewer tax returns for families. We're not having the system where you give us money and then we give you money back. Even if voters reject this measure, though, income taxes will still go down for the next two years to 4.5 percent thanks to Tabor and the fact that the state collected over the revenue cap in previous years. But in the future, if this passes, the short term, what we would really see is an end to those Tabor rebates. Colorado's income taxes are simple because they're the same for everyone. People on both sides have called for them to go away forever. If we can move away from taxing income. I would also love to take Colorado to a zero income tax state. Others want to rework Colorado's tax code to make it more progressive so that the rich pay more. For now, it's up to voters to decide if it's time to reduce the income tax in the state once again. Megan Lopez, Denver 7.